I said there were two things I wanted to talk about <clears throat> before the sermon. And thank you that I have a little extra time today. <sighs> because this next one's a little tougher. Boys and girls, some of you were in the front. When I was growing up, my mother used to always tell me, when someone does something nice for you, make sure you say, thank you. But she also taught me that when sometimes I do something wrong, make sure that I learn to say, I'm sorry. Two weeks ago, I preached a sermon where I said it was going to be a tough sermon. I said that if we are going to love God, we have to learn to love others. And when we love others, we must learn to accept others without favor or partiality. If you missed that sermon, I, I want to encourage you to go back. It's on our website to watch it. Because it really is the foundation of we want Loma Linda Filipino Church to be. The Apostle James said, don't be partial. Don't show favoritism. Treat everyone how? Equal. Well, you know what? If you're going to preach a tough sermon, you have to be willing to answer tough questions. Last week, a member lovingly asked me a tough question. And they said, Pastor, is it true that in the past, before you became our lead pastor, that you believe that our senior members have to move on before change can happen in our church? Did I believe that our senior leadership have to move on before change can happen in Loma Linda Filipino Church? And you know, in that conversation, I admitted that I was guilty that I was guilty of age discrimination. You see, there was a time when I was so frustrated with our church that I felt it was too difficult for the young and the old to work together for the common good. Could you, Ernie? Elders, deacons, our senior members, and member of our church. I stand here today admitting that I was wrong. that I was immature in my thinking. And I will be the first to admit that I am not perfect and that God isn't yet done pruning and shaping me. But I can tell you today with a clear conscience I can honestly say that I do not feel those feelings today at all. Loma Linda Filipino needs every single one of us, old and young, to be able to work together for the greater good of God's kingdom. May you do me a favor? 
If you're someone older, can you look at someone younger? And if you're someone younger, can you look at someone older? And say with a smile on your face, we need you. Thank you. And right now, I, I want to look at our seniors around the room, both to my left and to my right. And I'm going to be straightforward and say, I am sorry. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? I remember sitting down with Brother Rudy in his house. And with tears in my eyes, I said, I know that the elders have doubts about me. And he looked at me straight in my eyes and said, yes, pastor, and I am one of them. I want you to know that today I consider Kuya Rudy as one of my strongest allies in this church today because I truly believe that we can work together old and young for this church to grow and thrive. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. You know, this week, kids, I saw a movie that caught my eye. Last two weeks ago, no, last week, we did a baby dedication of who? Rayo. And I'm going through, and I saw this film called, man, this laptop is, is called Raya. And in that film really struck me because the father says to Raya, his daughter, he says this, if we don't learn to trust each other, will tear each other apart. If we don't learn to trust each other, we'll tear each other apart. How true is that? Well, it's very true. If you don't learn to trust each other, Everything that this lead pastor has to say, you will second guess. If we don't learn to trust each other, anytime someone says something different than what I am suggesting, I will second guess. And we begin to be members who look out for our back instead of looking out for each other's back. Now I want to let you guys know today, I'm not going to look out for my back, but I 
I want to look out for yours. I believe we can trust each other. I believe in my heart that members of this church believes that this church is ordained by God for the greater good. That we are one. So I hope that today is a new day for me. That's a new day for many of you. I know that I'm going to have to learn to earn your trust. And by God's grace, I will. Let us pray. God, forgive us when we have fallen short. Forgive us when we have been immature. Forgive me when I have not seen every single member as simply your loving child. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you that together we can shine for God's glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew. Oh, good. This is not a long sermon. It's actually going to be a fun sermon. A little bit fun. So, I'm going to start with this. The verse is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. If you've got your Bibles, can you turn with me? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. That's the premise of our sermon today. If you've got your Bibles, open it up. It's a simple passage. It's, I'm taking it from the New Living Translation. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. It says, like, it says this. Send your grain across the seas, and in time... Prophets will flow back to you. Send your grain across the seas, and in due time, prophets will grow back to you. Kids, I've got a little challenge for you today. Grab a little piece of paper from your mom or your phone or something, and every time I say the word invest, what word? So anytime you hear the word invest, whether it's invested, investing, investment, anytime you see that word, take account. And at the end, if you show me on your way out, I will, I have a little, I have a little, um, I have a little prize for you that you could win at the end of the rainbow. It's a hint. Okay. So keep track of the, and tell me how many times, Pastor Manny, you said invest. I've said it twice now. So many times, and you show it to me and give me a piece of paper. Okay, kids? Get a little piece of paper. So here we go. Um, as many of you know, I was a CPA actually before I became a pastor. So money and investing are actually my favorite topics um, that I like to talk about. And when it comes to investing, one of the, one of the interesting uh, parable that Jesus gave is found in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 25. Remember this? It's called the parable of the what? The, 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 so, the talents. Right? The parable of the talents. And so the parable of the talents goes something like this. Matthew chapter 25. Boy, that's going to be hard to read. Boy, this TV is not showing uh, what I have on the screen. That's okay. I'm going to keep on moving. Um, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 13. So the, the verse goes, there is like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. Some of you own land in the Philippines, so you know what a caretaker is all about. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave what? Two talents, and to another he gave one talents. Now, after the long time, the master came back and settled his accounts. I mean, now verse 20. And he who received the five talents came forward bringing how many more? Five more talents, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five more. Verse 21, his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also said to the one who had two talents who came forward and says, Master, you delivered me how many? Two talents. 
I have made two talents more. His master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter the joy of the master. Now here comes the part that nobody really wants to talk about. He also received the one talent. He came forward and saying, master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid my talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. But the master answered him and said, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I don't sow, I gather where there are no seeds. Then you should have at least put your money where? In the bank. So that it can earn interest. So he takes the talent from him and gives it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has, who has will be more given and will be more abundant. But from the one who has not, even that will be taken away. In the next few minutes, give me the latitude to springboard from this, from this parable um, to see what some of the principles that we can apply today. Now, if you have a child between under the age of 20, this is really geared for you. And if you are a young adult, this is really for you. If you're a young adult and you haven't thought about this, this is really for you. So I'm, I'm hoping that God, please allow my laptop to work. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, Leo. Left and right. Left and right. Left and right. Okay. I need okay. that one. Good. There you go. Thank you. Can you be right there? Thanks. <laughs> so Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey puts this illustration about two friends. Their name was Ben and Arthur. Ben and who? Arthur. Ben and Arthur. This is interesting because Ben, at the age of 19, decides that he was going to start to invest $2,000 a year for the next eight years. So Ben begins to invest $2,000, how, how often? A year for the next, how long? Eight years. So he invests $2,000 for eight years. How much money did Ben end up investing? $16,000. In the meanwhile, his friend Arthur says, you know, um, I'm in college, I'm gonna have a good time first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, then I start working full time, then I'll start to invest. So his, his friend Arthur begins to invest $2,000 a month at the age of 27. So one started at what age? 19. The other one started at what age? 27. But Arthur did something that Ben didn't even do. He invested $2,000 a month every year until he's about to retire at 65. Right? Ben invests up to 26, stops investing. Arthur invests $2,000 a year until he was retired. The money is kept in the bank until they were 65 years old. Now, there's a couple of premises in here. One that they invested in a, an account that earns 12% interest. So just know that that's how that's calculated, okay? And I know some of you are going to get, where are you going to invest the money where you get 12%? That's a different sermon. <laughs> that's a whole different workshop. And that one you have to pay for me to give it to you. <laughs> so anyway, just kidding. No, I wasn't. Um, <laughs> so over here, so without looking at the answer, logically, who would have more money at 65, Ben or Arthur? Logically, you guys are being too smart. Logically, it seems to me that Arthur, who invested $78,000, $2,000 a year for the next, for, for the next uh, umpteen years, would have more money at 65. Doesn't that make sense? But you know, in this illustration, you are absolutely correct. Ben actually has $2.2 million 
actually has $2.2 million, while Arthur only has $1.5 million. Now, I'll take $1.5 million, okay? So I'm not, I'm not, you know, most of us, man, if, we, if we're retiring with $1.5 million, we'll, we'll feel pretty good, right? But in this illustration, Arthur never catches up. Arthur never catches up. So even though Ben invests literally, what's 16 minus 78? 52? Something like that, right? Even though he invests $52,000 less, he is actually $756,000 more. For those of you who are in college, at 19, 20, listen, I wish I knew that when I was 19 or 20. And if you're 19, 20 now, you better start thinking about how I'm going to make a difference. You see, these guys ended up to be millionaires without being a millionaire. I'm going to say that again. These guys ended up to be millionaires without starting off as a millionaire. In fact, that's just common folk. Ben just actually set aside $167 a month. Think about that. $167 a month. That's what $2,000 is. And because he did that for eight years, he came out with $2.2 million. And he only did it for how many years? Eight years. So here's, here's some key points, and I... I Trust me, I'm going to tie this into what, why are we talking about investing in church? Trust me that this is going to all tie together. So, lesson number one. Things to remember. Oh, not too fast. Back up, back up, buddy. Slow down. <laughs> lesson number one. E, the earlier you begin, the what? The better the result, right? The earlier you start the better you saw. Could you imagine if you began to put money in your child's account the day they were born and did it for the first eight years? Man, that's your retirement right there. Right? You have changed your child's life forever. Because if you started when your child was at one year old and for the next eight years you put aside $2,000 and when they got 65, your child will forever remember you and love you, right? So the first thing we got to understand is that the earlier you begin, the better the result. Number two, the amount you invest makes a difference. So for example, in this illustration, and I was going to go through and, and, and actually show you the, the thing, but I won't do that because it's not enough time. But if Ben only invested $1,000 a year instead of $2,000 a year, he would have only made $1.1 million. If he only invested $1,000 a year instead of two, he would have only made $1.1 million. So the amount makes a difference. But if Ben invested $1,000 more, if he invested $3,000 instead of $2,000, you know how much he would have? He would have approximately, ooh, ooh, where's my notes? This is incredible. He would have $3.4 million. From 2.3 to $3.4 million, and the only difference he put is $8,000. $8,000. For $8,000, he got a return of $1.1 million. So the amount makes the difference. R, you're catching this. The rate of return, the rate of interest affects your investment. The rate of interest affects your investment. What do I mean? This illustration was based on what percentage? 12%. 
But what if Ben only went out there and he only found an investment that made 10%? Well, you know, if he only got 10%, he would, he would only have 1,037,000. Only 2% difference makes a $1.2 million difference. He would only have 1,037,000 or a million two less. But if Ben simply got one more percent, if he went from 12% to 13%, do you know how much Ben would have? If he went from 12% to 13%, he would have $3.4 million, just 1% more. What am I saying? The rate of interest significantly affects your what? Investment, right? And finally, last lesson, N. It needs time. If Ben pulled out his money at 60 instead of 65, if he pulled out his money at 60 instead of 65, he will only have $1.3 million. But here's the flip side. If he kept his money in until five years later, until he turned 70, like what Social Security says, you know how much money he would have? He would have $4 million. Five years only difference, $4 million difference. Why? Because now the, the compounding rate on $2.3 million is a lot, right, Kriya? It just multiplies. So now, here's the question. Pastor Vitug, this is divine service. Why are we talking about investing? Here it is. Because how we invest our resources determines the profit that we get. As a church, how do we invest our resources? I'm going to say this carefully, but I'm going to say it. E, the earlier that we invest on those that are younger, the greater the what? The return. You see, when I invest in this little child, how old are you, dear? Four. When I invest in this little child, one day, that return will be amazing. The more, the younger we invest. And oftentimes we ask ourselves, where do we put our money in the church? Guys, it's a no-brainer. The younger we invest, the greater the what? The return. Number two, the amount makes a difference. You want to give our children's ministry $5,000 to work with? They'll do okay. You want to give them something really substantial that they can make an amazing program? That makes a difference. You see, amount does make a difference. We can't say we love our kids and not what? Not invest. We can't say we love our young people and not invest. But here's the reason why we have a tough time investing in that philosophy. But let me, let me go with the R. The greater the what? The rate of interest, the greater the impact. What does that mean? That means... The more us as elderlies and seniors take interest in our young people, the more amazing the result will be. It's not just about money. It's also, a, my, right, still $8,000. It's not just about money. It's also about the rate of interest. So I ask us ourselves, what is the interest that we have? What do we as grandparents, what do we do as parents? What do we, how do we show our interest to those who are younger? 
Because here it is, right? In evangelism, people like get rich quick schemes. I know I fall into it, right? We want to make money the fast and easy way. But in this illustration, what does it need? It needs time. You see, the reason why we don't invest that way is because when I invest in the little one, I don't see my, my return tomorrow. I see my return years later. And sometimes in a society where if we want food, we put it in a microwave. If we don't want to cook, we take it out of the freezer. If we're hungry, we go to a fast food. But folks, best tasting food are those that slowly cook, right? Those that's in the slow cooker. Those, those that we, those to some fish that they steam overnight. I forgot, what's the name of that? Oh, that's my favorite. Oh, I must be getting hungry. I'm talking about food, okay? But, but the best food are those who is cooked over time. You see, we, we don't want to invest that way because we don't see immediate results. But if we are wise like the world, we will know that when we invest early, that we invest with the right amount, that our rate of return makes a difference, that we will allow it time, then we will see the impact. Now, you guys know that I like to make this simple for our kids. So today, I'm going to do something really crazy, and I may be the shortest stint lead pastor in this church ever. But I'm going to do it to you, Ernie. I'm going to do it. If I don't have a job after this, it's okay. But I'm going to do it. Kids, I need to explain to you what it means to say the greater the investment the greater the return. I'm going to need three volunteers. I'm going to pick them. A 10-year-old, a 30-ish year old, and a 70-ish year old. Could you, Ernie? <laughs> The 30-ish, um, Janice and Lynn, can you rock, paper, scissors? 30-ish. Oh, you, you're past 30-ish? Oh, wow. I am so... Man, I'm going to have to do an apology again. Today, I was wrong. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. Janice, you're in the 30-ish? Okay. <sighs> What's your name, young man? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan. So I got Jonathan, Janice, and Journey. <laughs> Good Ernie. <laughs> so what I'd like to do at this time really quick is um, do not try this at home without proper supervision. So Kuya Ernie and Janice and Journey, and Journey, he might need a little bit of help, you're going to make a little poncho by cutting a hole on top, putting your arms through. Janice, you're going to do the same. And you're going to have like a skirt on, dude. This is going to be really big on you. Can somebody help him with this? Do you need scissors? I've got scissors if you guys need scissors. Okay. So what we're going to do is one of these. I have scissors here if you need scissors on the top. Okay, you got it? Coke. 
Now, I want you to know that I got permission from our head deacon before I did this. So, and I also want to warn you that those sitting in the first five rows may have a splash effect. <laughs> okay? So, for, it, you may or may not, I don't know. I, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. So here, here's what we're going to do here. You just, yeah, just tear. Okay, you are going to start with you because you're young and you have a, a young and you have a little investment, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Hold on. So, um, your name again? Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm going to show you how this works. So, you're actually, notice I'm not putting on a, notice I'm not putting on a thing because they will get to do it. So, see this? All you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to pull this up to allow the menthols to come in and then you're going to back away. Don't let that spill, but you're just going to, so, so over here, right? You're just going to pull this and then back away, right? So practice this, practice. That's all, right? So we're going to start with one interest, right? One menthos, 10-year-old represents the interest. Are you ready, Jonathan? You got your cameras? It's just one. Okay, so you're going to step over. No, 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 just step over. Okay. Oh, no, no, you better have one foot on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Slowly and just pull that gently, gently, gently. Ready? Move. Okay. How much interest was that? One, right? But remember, the, the kids, remember the principle? The greater the what? The interest the greater the return. So Janice here is in her 30s. So we're going to try three. So Janice, just so you understand this, right? Try that right there, right? Pull that. So you're going to put three in there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up. So that was good. That was no splash. Okay, Janice, you have you have you have thing there. Okay, here we go. Okay, now make sure it's closed. It's closed. Okay, make sure it's closed. Yeah, huh? Good? Okay. So kids, what are we trying to learn? The greater the interest, the greater the return. So I'm going to go over here. And we're going to do three. Ready? Ready? One, two. Wow, that's pretty good. Three, right? But you see, Kuya Ernie has invested his whole life. So he's not going to do one. He's not going to do three. He's going to do seven.
Kearney first. We're going to practice this. You, you, so you're just going to go like this, right? Okay. And then so we're going to put seven in here. It's closed. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just a bit too early. Should we, should we try that again? Try that again. I brought a spare just in case. <laughs> Okay, okay, Ernie, we're going to open this one. Let's try that again. Do you guys want to try it one more time? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure that it's in. Okay. Oops. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you didn't close it? Okay. Now, we did one, we did three, and it was about halfway. Let's see what seven does. Ready? Here we go. Oh, no, no, don't, don't pull it away because it's going to, you just, yeah. Oh, no, no, Pierre Ernie, just this one, this one, this one right there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, get out. Get out. <laughs> wow. When I go to my office on Monday, there will be a termination letter. <laughs> a cleaning fee. So kids, what did we learn? The greater the interest, the greater the return. The greater the investment, the greater the return. I'm going to end with a story, true story. He was an old pastor. He was in his 70s. And this pastor, um, he, this pastor just, um, he just, he was funny. He had a head of white hair. He was in his 70s. He had a funny sense of humor. But you know, he loved kids. He loved kids. And one day, this old pastor met this nine-year-old boy. Met this how old? Nine-year-old boy. And you see this nine-year-old boy, he didn't have much friends. He wasn't very coordinated and his parents didn't know Jesus. But because he had all these years of working with kids, there was something about him that attracted him to that little boy. And so, you know, with the parents' permission, that pastor took that child to Pathfinders, gave him Bible study, taught him how to shoot a bow and arrow, taught him how to hit a tennis ball, and even gave him his first set of golf clubs. You see, he invested a great deal of interest and he invested a great deal of time. And as that boy grew up, he learned to love Jesus. He loved Jesus so much that one day he said to himself, 
one day, I want to be just like him. That young boy became a man. And when this old pastor was now in his 80s, that man says, will you have the honor of marrying us? And it was the very last wedding before he died that that pastor ever did. But you know one thing that that pastor never saw? He never saw that this young man would one day also become a pastor. You see, this old pastor, his name was Pastor Potenciano Romulo. And that young man was me. I was blessed that someone who was retired invested in me as a child. And though he never knew it, his investment returned a significant return. Pastor Romulo knew the principles. He knew that the earlier the investment, the better the return. That the amount makes a difference. And that the rate of our interest makes a significant impact. And though he never saw the ultimate result, he knew that when you invest in a little one, it's going to need time. We need each other. The young needing the old. And the old needing the young. Shall we pray? God, thank you for your gift of an elderly who loved on me, cared on me, put his arms around me. Thank you that when others did not see, he saw. Thank you for those seeds of investment at an early age. God, I can't wait until I see him in heaven and share with him stories of how his investment has made a profit through the people that have come to know Jesus, through young people who's accepted Jesus Christ, and for a church who is loving on people, young and old. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.